And here's when it gets interesting because unlike many other people on YouTube, that's when we start to consider PSA graded cards into the model to not only have the usual expected value per pack, but we also want to know how this number changes after we consider PSA graded cards. Hello people, this is Bear from Bear Collector and today we're gonna continue to one of a favorite series here on the channel, which is the Can You Profit opening a certain set. Now, if you haven't watched it already, we've done it for Lost Origin, we've done it for Grand Zenith, Poldeum Fates, Temporal Forces, Poldeum Evolved. As always, I'll pop up the link to the playlist on top of my head, so if you wanna go watch it after this video, obviously, you can take a look at whatever set you have in mind. And if there's any particular set, or if you want me to update one of the previous sets, such as uh, Lost Origin or Crown Zenith, because obviously prices evolved, pull rates don't on average, but prices do, then I highly recommend you guys let me know down in the comments. So if you're familiar, you already know what we're going to do today. If not, then uh, I'll take you quickly through Paradox Rift, which is going to be today's set, as we are going to open one booster box, ideally either Sunday or else next week. If you're interested in that, I'm selling packs for 2.3 euros a pack, and especially for people in the European Union. And if you want to know more, if you want to join, then just join the Discord, which I highly recommend either way. And uh, you can mess with me on there, so you can reach out on the Discord. So, as always, what we like to do here, we like to take a look at the list of the card in Paradox Rift, which is starting to get some love. I've always loved it. I made a video on it about 10 days ago, and I, I've never hated it, um, because I'm a big fan of the Groudon and the Steelix, which is right here, that I bought myself. So, we're going to take a look at the set, we're going to take a look at pull rates, uh, the source is this G player that they open, as you can see here, over 8,000 packs. Then the source for price data, current market price, is this G player. So we're going to take a look at this time at American prices, not European. And then we have, obviously, the pop report here for PSA graded cards for Paradox Rift. And then when it comes to PSA sales, which is what we're going to do, we're also going to take a look at not only raw cards prices, which is what many other YouTubers do, perhaps better than, than myself, but we also here on Barrett Collector, we include PSA graded cards into the model, so obviously that's gonna shift prices as well. So the source for that prices here is 130 points, which I filter for eBay sales, and I like to take a look at auctions. There's a reason why, if you want to know why, just let me do it down in the comments. Uh, I have to make a video on it, it's, it's in the list, but I just need to, find a time and make a video on it. And I usually try to be conservative when it comes to PSA prices at auction. So without further ado, quickly let's go over the cards and then we'll get into the data. So Rory Moon, which has dropped from $100 to now 50, it is below 50 euros in the European Union. You can find multiple copies from the same seller at around 46 euros. If I'm not mistaken, Gridon, which has risen, I bought myself a few copies, so if you're in the European Union and you want some, just let me know. And then High Hands, which is currently played in the beta, and uh, the Double Rare, High Hands Double Rare is the most expensive Double Rare in the set, about $15. Iron Valiant, which also started strong with the set and now it's dropping. Ataria EX, again another Iron Hands. Goldango EX, which is kind of sitting there. And then Personal Lady has actually taken a drop as well the gods of the amp. Now again, as I said in the beginning of the video, I'm a big fan of the Groudon and Steel myself. And then we do have some very nice illustration rares such as the Morpigo, the Minion Plus, and then also the Magby. I think it's pretty cute. So without further ado, let's just get into the data. So here's a usual spreadsheet. As you can see, I wasn't lying. You have many different sets that I cover throughout the series. And again, the link, I'll have it pop it up again if you, in case you skip the beginning of the video. So if you wanna go watch any of these sets, just click on it. So they're all divided by rarity, double rare, ultra rare, hyper rare, illustration rare, and special illustration rare. I've not considered regular rares, I've not considered common and commons, after, even though we are going to talk about some two special commons as you can probably already see here that uh, we're, we're gonna take a, uh, we're gonna talk about later. So, one thing I have to say when it comes to pricing and take the average price out of every uh, rarity slot, so double rare, ultra rare, blah, 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 I'm considering that every card is equally distributed. What does it mean? So let's take ultra rare, for instance. 
Pulling on Iron Hand, he acts Ultra Rare, has the same probability of pulling an Iron Violent EX Ultra Rare, which has the same probability of pulling a Larry. So that's what equal distributor means. Probability of pulling any card within th this, any, any rarity slot, is the same. So that has to be set, and that's how, with that assumption, we can now consider the average just by simply adding up all these numbers and then divided by the number they are. Otherwise, if probabilities were different, we would need to give different weights to every card prize. Now, without further ado, we already went through the sets. So again, I will consider from double or higher, and then we'll take a, uh, we'll talk about a few other investors. So, raw prices data. I'll zoom in a bit. Here's a pool rate. Again, TCG player is the source. Double rare, roughly one every six pack. Ultra rare, roughly one every fifteen packs. Illustration rare. I mean, actually, illustration rare, roughly one uh, every thirteen packs. So roughly three per box. Special illustration rare, one every forty-seven packs. Hyper rare, which is the highest pool as it has been in all Scarlet and Violet sets so far, is one every eighty-two packs. Now these are estimates. In order to do the math, which I'm going to talk you through in just a second, these are the numbers I use. So, what's this number? Expected value from a pack given rarity. Now, I call it value. Um, it should be called price. Uh, I don't know. It, it's called expected value because not the value in the pack, but expected value comes from a metrical terms, which stands for what is also referred to as mean. It's called expected value. So, not to be mistaken. I have in plan, spoiler, a video talking about value and price because I see, I hear in YouTube videos or many times talk to you as if they were the same thing, but they're two different words and they're, there's two different meanings behind value and pack. So expected value comes from uh, actually the mathematical term for expected value, not to be com com confused for the value of a pack. I just wanted to point that out as that's basically the main focus on the channel to be precise, let the numbers talk and be a mathematician myself. I am very careful of every word I say. So this number here, as you can see, is basically the pull rate. So probability of pulling a double rare in a single given pack times the average price of a double rare. And uh, all these numbers I've taken the same way, obviously. What changes is the average price you come out of uh, ultra rare, so of the rarity, and obviously the pull rate for the rarity. You sum all these numbers up, and uh, that's the expected value one dollars and forty nine cents. Now, a few honorable mentions are these two uncommons, which I've obviously played, that are earthen vessel and counter catcher. Now, this is a probability of pulling every one of this as there are three uncommons in a pack and there are 80 uncommons in the set and uh, these are current TCG market price so that's basically the value you can add when you consider these two into the model so 1.49 let's let's say 1.5 plus that would come up to 13 cents if i'm not mistaken so 1.63 so obviously if the more bulk you consider into the model the more this number is gonna get higher. So onto the hot stuff, which is the main focus on this series. That is what no one else, at least what I've seen so far, no one else is doing it on YouTube, is consider some graded cards. Now, I've only considered these cards. The more you add, ideally, if they're sought after cards, the more you could, uh, on average, increase the expected value of a pack. Unless the card is very hard to grade and uh, therefore, it's not really going to add much value. So another assumption that is very important that we're going to make in order for these numbers to work, and I say this in every video, is that these are pop reports. So we only consider PSA 9 and 10s. We don't consider anything below a 9. And we're considering the fact that we're pulling a card out of a pack, a card that is, uh, the pack wasn't damaged, and the card is going to get either PSA 9 and 10. We're not going to look at it and we're going to send it to PSA. So when doing so, in order for these numbers to actually hold true in this assumption, we need to assume that everyone else that sent those cards to get graded did the same. So they pulled a pack that wasn't damaged and they didn't look at it and they sent it to PSA and that's the numbers, that's the, the grades they got. 
Is that realistic? Absolutely not, because you could, you know, they could have done what is usually called pre-grading, so they could have expected the card and look if it was 10 worthy and then send it or not, or they could have just bought it and they just went in a slab and they send it off to PSA. We don't know about that. So, but in order for this whole model to work, we need to make those assumptions. And if I wouldn't be telling you the guys, I would just be continuing doing the math, but I would be lying as what I would be saying in the end. So this number right here, which can can already read, would be misleading. It would be correct, but uh, under the wrong assumption because I wouldn't be saying them to you. So I always care about being fair to you guys as well as providing as much value as I can. So without further ado, these are prices already mentioned. The prices come off eBay recent sales and ideally auctions and uh, there I'm always conservative. So there have been auctions higher than this. I've always tried to stay on the lower hand. So now here, as you can see here, if I can zoom in, but right here, you can probably see a minus 15. That's the cost of grading for the lowest tier. And I'm assuming that if you want them faster, then obviously all the numbers are gonna go lower and this number is going to as well. So I'm assuming, I, I think it's called TCG book if I'm not mistaken. And um, that's uh, what it costs, $15. So same thing here, but this time we also consider this price into the model and uh, it comes down to $1 and a nine cents. So can you profit opening Paradox Rift packs on average? The answer is, it depends on what uh, price you get packs. If you get them for below this number, and this does not include bulk, then you can. If you, like most of people, this comes down to less than $70 a box. If you can get them, if you cannot get them for less than $70 a box, which I don't know if even distributors can, uh, I'm, I don't know, then uh, you can't. So, and again, that is on average. Obviously, if you pull, if you open a box and you get the Rory Moon and the Grout in the same box, you grade them a 10, then yes, you can profit. But we're talking on average, larger numbers. So, so that's gonna be it. If you enjoy this type of content, it really takes quite some time to put down everything down in a table and then look up at prices and PSA grid reports, blah, 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 blah. Then I would highly appreciate if you could leave a like and subscribe. That being said, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this series and what is the next set you'll like me to cover. Hope to see you in the Discord. Thanks for watching.